Okay, uh, I'd like to shed some light on resampling techniques. This is something that you see in a lot of different tools in ARC. Um, it's usually labeled as optional, and it's not. <laughs> so let's talk about it briefly. Um, I'm going to do this kind of in the framework of georeferencing and um, that process. So what is a transformation, first of all? A transformation is any time you're changing the geometry of a raster data set from one coordinate space to another. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a coordinate system change, um, but the actual coordinates are changing because you're changing cell size or uh, resampling in some other way. So the different kinds of varieties of this and, and reasons you might see it are if you're um, doing rubber sheeting or georeferencing um, a data set from a non-referenced plane to a spatially referenced plane, um, if you're projecting data, translating, just trying to shift a data from one location to another, uh, rotating data, getting it oriented north up, um, or changing the cell size. And specifically, the different tools that we run that do these are uh, resample to change the cell size, defining a coordinate system for a data set that's unreferenced, or doing a reproject to change the coordinate system. Now, a lot of this information I've gotten from ArcGIS's um, online resources, and this is a link um, to where you can get some good information and some great images about this. Um, really, what this is boiling down to is a resample, and that's basically sampling the cells from an existing raster into an empty raster matrix. Um, and those are the three techniques that we're going to be talking about. Um, so these are the different techniques that I'm talking about and the different places you might have seen them. When you add a raster to ArcMap, it often asks you or prompts you to build pyramids so that it'll draw faster. Um, it doesn't really matter in this case which one you pick because it's just a visualization tool. Um, but this is the most common place you'll see the resampling techniques. Uh, projecting rasters. It gives you an option to resample uh, in, in four different ways, nearest, bilinear, cubic, and majority. I'm going to talk about these in a second. It isn't, in fact, <laughs> in fact optional. Um, resampling itself, the straight resample tool. Again, you're giving, given the option to pick the technique that you want to use. Um, so if you use the tool help, which I always recommend people do, it gives you a definition of the different re resampling techniques, which I'm going to show you um, a graphic about. Uh, if you don't read these and don't apply them to the type of raster that you're working with, you are doing GIS wrong. And I'll leave it there. All right, so for the idea of georeferencing an image, um, imagine that this, this is um, a random aerial photograph, a subset of one. It doesn't have any spatial re reference. It's just floating in arc um, wildly. We do the georeferencing on it and pin it down to its real location, which causes it to rotate north up. The scale is going to shift um, so that we've got the correct scale. But now what we need to do is lock this thing down to an existing coordinate system. We do that using the rectify command. Um, but that's when the resampling gets done. So imagine that you've got this existing raster and the user defines the new cell size and the new coordinate system that we're going to assign to this data set. When you um, input those values to ARC, ARC creates an empty matrix or an empty grid that we're going to assign the original raster values into. And the different techniques for doing that are the nearest, bilinear, nearest neighbor bilinear interpolation and cubic convolution. Um, but it's important to know that the existing raster has a value associated with it, and ARC um, determines the cell center based on the resolution of the existing raster and knows the cell center's value. So those are the black points in the original raster. So user-defined um, resolution for the new grid, new coordinate system, and an existing raster. Nearest neighbor says for every single empty cell in the new matrix, I'm just going to pull the nearest cell center from the original raster and assign that value to my new raster. Um, this works really well for categorical data or cyclic data. Uh, let me show you an example of that really quick. So this is um, an aspect raster over a hillshade in the basin and range area of, of Utah. None of that is important. Aspect is a cyclic data set um, that's classified based on compass directions. Let me bring that in here. Where north is both 0 to approximately 22 degrees 
and also, what is it, 337 to 360 degrees. So that's important because we can't average between 360 and zero and let me skip it let me let me save that for a second cyclic data though will have like features so northern um, aspect features with cell values of 360 and zero or one um, so that's the important part another kind of data set that is um, categorical or good for nearest neighbor inter um, resampling is land cover where we have um, non-ranked values that represent categorical features. So for example, you also can't average between 1, which is North American Alpine Ice Field, and 10, Intermountain Basins Shale Badland, and get value of 5, Rocky Mountain Cliff and Canyon. These numbers aren't ranked numeric. Um, they are categorical. They're just a representation of a land cover. So those two types are the most common types of data that we need to be aware of when doing resampling. Nearest neighbor preserves the value. It doesn't try and average between um, other values to get kind of a smoothing effect. We need to preserve the number 10 because it equals a specific land cover type. Or in the case of the cyclic, we can't average between 0 and 360. We're going to get 180, and that's south. Okay, let me move on to bilinear interpolation. So here, if we're trying to assign a new value to this cell, um, ARC looks at the nearest four neighbors um, at the cell values there and averages them. And it does a weighted average so that the nearer cell values are weighted more heavily. So this is what I'm talking about when we start to get a smoothing effect. We can't do this with discrete data or cyclic data, but this is really great for continuous data like elevation, soil moisture, uh, wind speed, temperatures, things that are continuous phenomena. This works really well. The third most common is cubic convolution, and it's the same thing, it just weights a bigger area. So it's looking at the nearest 16 cell centers and weighting those values to come up with um, a new assignation for our processing. Uh, cell in the empty matrix. Um, this tends to work uh, well for imagery, and this is what you would use if you're doing georeferencing um, because it does tend to have a slight sharpening effect. And so, cubic convolution would be the recommendation for georeferenced. And so, kind of wrapping that up, categorical data, you don't want to use bilinear or cubic because we need to preserve the actual values um, of the original raster cells. Um, this is also true for cyclic data. All right, so just as examples, we have discrete data, land cover, where the values are non-ranked and represent um, discrete land cover types. This is where we're going to use nearest neighbor because the cell values don't change. For continuous data, we want to use bilinear interpolation. It averages the nearest four cell values and has a smoothing effect. And then for imagery, we want to use cubic convolution because it averages the nearest 16 cell values and tends to sharpen. Okay, so specific to georeferencing. Remember, after you get your georeferencing done, you need to rectify the image to save it. This is where you tell ARC um, the cell size and the resampling technique, and uh, it creates the empty, the empty matrix that it's going to resample the existing cell values into. So just as a reminder, with imagery, it's cubic convolution when you run the rectify. Here's the window. You set the cell size. You set the resample type. Um, ARC has a transformation that it's been working with. Um, the first order polynomial is the default. Um, and using those three inputs, the resampling technique, the transformation technique, and your cell size, it builds an empty grid and then does um, the resampling and plugs in the, the values. So this is where you're going to want to pick cubic convolution. Uh, really briefly about the error, when you link between the old data set and the geo-referenced or um, spatially referenced data set, you get a table with a bunch of residual errors in them. The error is the difference between the from point um, where it ended up post-transformation and the specific location that you told it that it actually belongs to. So it does its best um, to link these two places together, but it has, to, it has to make the whole image fit. 
and depending on the transformation type that you're using, um, it's going to it's going to try and fit all those points together, but they're not all going to sit directly on top of each other. There's going to be a little bit of give between them, and so this RMS error is um, the distance between the two points that you've linked, and then the total RMS is just the average of all these. Um, a little bit about transformations. The polynomial are um, the most common and default is to use a first order, and all of that does is shifts, scales, rotates. It preserves straight lines, so it's going to pick things up, move them to right location, rotate north up, um, and rescale it. Uh, this is the most common, but it is important to know that um, you can control for only shifting if you've got a, a really brilliant data set but it's just off a little bit and you need to move it over, you can do a zero order which preserves all this and makes sure that it doesn't rotate away from north up or um, differentially scale or skew in any way. But um, it's when you get into the higher order transformations, things like spline, adjust, and projective, that's when you can start getting some warping in one or two dimensions. So that's um, kind of the beauty of the Affine is that you can control for that and make sure you're preserving the integrity of your original image or survey. Um, that was it in a whirlwind. Um, if you have questions, let me know, and hopefully that offers some clarity. It's not just as clear as mud. Thanks.